we're here today in the studio of the Salford artist Geoffrey Key, um, a man who has been described as one of the greatest British living artists, and I fully agree with that. And the man is exhibited in many galleries all over the world, to be fair to say, wouldn't it, Geoffrey? Yeah, yeah, I've shown uh, quite a lot in Europe, um, also had um, three major shows in Hong Kong. Um, in fact, represented um, Salford at the Salon, uh, the Autumn Salon in uh, Saint-Ouen, which Salford is twinned with. Yeah. Uh, and that was quite an experience. Yeah. <laughs> to revert back, we're back early days. Now, you were born in Rusholm, was it 41? Yes, 1941 in Rusholm, yeah. And a very, you... very different, um, yeah. uh, yes. Topographically, it was very, very different than it is. Two up, two downs. Yeah, it was a tiny little place, but um, it, it was it was lovely. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Now you attended the Manchester School of High School of Art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I passed my exam to go uh, to um, uh, Burnage High, but. If I'd have gone there, uh, I wouldn't have been able to have sat for the, the high school of art, which was sort of like a 13 plus. Mm. Uh, so I stayed on at uh, Hill Place Secondary Modern and um, I took the exam and th thankfully I got it. I got, so I got into the high school of art, which was a, a real sort of... Um, a creative sort of hothouse. It was fantastic. Yeah. Was Harry Rutherford one of your tutors, wasn't he? Well, he was when I went to the College of yeah. Art. Um, uh, my main tutor at the High School of Art was a fantastic painter uh, called Peter Oliver, who actually lived in the uh, Channel Islands, and uh, he used to sort of just come over for term time. And um, and you see, when I'd finished, well, when people were sitting there at GCEs, I decided I wanted to go to art college, so I didn't bother with GCE. And, um, uh, but what I had got with having uh, a few years at the High School of Art, it was you were automatically accepted into the Regional College of Art. And... Um, and from one hothouse to another, it was uh, in incredible. So that's why I'm basically illiterate, I think. You know? <laughs> I, 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 did, I didn't concentrate on, on you know, uh, uh, English. And Reading and writing. That's it, yeah. <laughs> but you became, a, by default, an art teacher in Salford, didn't you? Duke Street. Uh, yeah, I was funny. I was on my last day and I was in the sculpture studio at uh, the College of Art and I was knocking hell out of a, a great lump of wood and um, and a friend of mine kept, uh, popped in who'd left the year before and he said um, uh, what do you what do you do because you leave next week and and, and sort of like a bulb lit up and I, I sort of I thought, well, what the heck can I do? Uh, I hadn't thought about that that problem, and uh, and he said, well, I, I'm teaching. Uh, I'm the head of the art department at uh, uh, Duke, Duke Street, Street. Um, School in Broughton, and he, he said uh, we, we're short of a member of staff. So I went there, and and it was quite a big department. There was. Um, there was a ceramic section and there was three separate art rooms uh, because Mr Quinn, who was the, um, the headmaster, was incredibly keen on art. Uh, but unfortunately he didn't stay uh, because he retired. But uh, as time went on, I, I became the head of the, this art department. And, uh, and it reached a stage where... Um, I was, every spare minute I, I was 
painting uh, in my flat in Ettles. Um, and, um, uh, and it was very difficult to, to actually... I decided I couldn't... I was either going to end up as a bad teacher or a bad painter. So something had to mm. give. And with being incredibly selfish, I decided uh, I'd go down the painting route. <laughs> Would it be right to say that the Stanley Shaw helped you with your career? Uh, oh, the, the, the art, 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 art gallery. He, he was he was fantastic, uh, and his oppo at the time was Harry Davis, um, and and they sort of uh, gave me an exhibition at uh, Salford, which was a quite a big show. Um, in the the main art gallery session, I think about had about 120 paintings, and uh, and it got very good coverage by the um, the press. And uh, and and it well, it virtually ended up as a sellout. Well, a sellout. There was I think there was two drawings left. Um, but that gave me enough money to actually. Moved from the flat in Ettles, mm -hmm. and and I got a uh, a, a house in uh, Earlham of the Height, and um, where I still live. I'm glad you mentioned Eccles. You lived on Victoria Crescent, didn't you? But that's and where you, the flat was. Yeah. Well, yeah. And you told me that Lowry, how was Lowry visited you? Oh yeah. Uh, well, I was very friendly with um, uh, Gerald Cotton, who was the. Um, uh, the chief librarian at Salford, and and he uh, was a big friend of Lowry's, and uh, he phoned me up one New Year's Day, and he said, um, "I said I've got I've got uh, Lowry with me. Is it all right if we call in?" And I, I got quite excited because it was the the, the same time as um, uh, Lowry's retrospective at the uh, the Tate. In, uh, in London and uh, anyway he brought him round and, uh, and he was looking through drawings of mine uh, which I, I don't think he quite understood and, uh, and uh, to be quite honest I don't understand his work um, and we got on like a house on fire it was it was really smashing um, mm. Can you remember what number Victoria Crescent? There may be a blue plaque, you see. Uh, it's the well, corner house, isn't it? It is the corner house. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. lived in Eccles many, many years, and that's, did you know Monks Hall? That was in Eccles as well. Oh, Monks Hall was absolutely yeah. superb, absolutely mm. superb. I had, in actual fact, two shows at Monks Hall, and. Um, I think it was Miss Patry who was yeah. uh, Madeline Patry. Uh, yeah, who was in charge, and uh, and you've got this basically sort of Elizabethan building with added bits yeah. from the Georgian period and a wonderful garden and what have you. And uh, why that closed down, I just I don't understand. Well, there's so much controversy surrounding it with the the sale of it for one. The fires. The, I don't particularly want to go down that road in case I, I say too much. It's a sad day that was. It still is. But it was a sad day for art. Yeah. Yeah. yeah very much so because the uh, outlets for art now are minimal. You know. I mean, I'm trying to think of the galleries where artists can exhibit locally and just keep it say Salford, for example. Well, that's one thing I really uh, was very impressed with when I uh, when I I, I'm, I moved to sort of Salford. Um, the main gallery there was virtually having uh, two or three exhibitions a month. There's some going, yeah. And um, uh, mainly of local artists, but at the same time, uh, some artists of international merit. Mm, yeah. yeah. Just flying off another tangent, is it 1993 you went to Hong Kong to exhibit? You're spot on, yeah, that was my first show there. 
Was he commissioned by the government, or is that an urban myth? Um, it's it's both urban and a myth. <laughs> <laughs> it's the um, now what what happened is uh, a, a professor David Anderson who was um, at what it was was Hope Hospital then, which mm -hmm. is now of Salford Royal. He and his wife, uh, who lived in um, Bramall, uh, started collecting my work. And, um, and then later on in his career, he, he was uh, given the, uh, the post of uh, the, the medical faction at Hong Kong University. And uh, and I think it was the first month he was out there. He gave a, a a dinner party, and one person at the party was uh, uh, a lady called uh, Walters, who had the Mandarin Gallery in um, mm -hmm. on Connaught Street in uh, in Hong Kong, and um, she said, "Who, who who's?" Done these pictures, and um, you know, she put uh, Mrs. Walters in touch with me, and uh, and that's how the first exhibition came about. But what happened, and this is this is this myth bit, uh, this is the fact. Now mm. there was a consortium of businessmen in Hong Kong and um, from this country who bought the entire collection. So when I flew out to Hong Kong for the uh, the preview, um, it was a nice feeling knowing that everything had already been it's sold. Yeah. So it was then resold at a obviously at a higher price for the um, the consortium. I read an interesting piece that you said that's where you discovered light. Very much so because uh, yeah, I'd been abroad, you know. Uh, with other exhibitions in France and Switzerland and Holland, and Germany, but I'd never ever seen light. I'd never been to sort of the Mediterranean, mm -hmm. and getting off that plane in in Hong Kong, and it was just absolutely mind blowing. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was it was like the. Um, uh, the Joyce Quare, uh, Carey uh, uh, sort of quote from the horse's mouth where uh, uh, Gully Jimson says, and it skinned my eyes. <laughs> and it did. I was well and truly skinned. I... Oh, yeah. What a film that is as well, isn't it? Fantastic. Flies, huh? Edgar Rowley Smart. What about him? What a man. You introduced me to his works. Oh, and... yeah. Well, well, one of the first people ever to buy my uh, pictures was a chap called um, Neville Rawlinson, who lived in Chalton. And he had a most wonderful, wonderful collection, a uh, private collection. And amongst it, a couple of Rowley Smarts. And then... You know, winding things forward, uh, I, I was at a sale and saw one example of Rolly Smart uh, at this sale, and I bought it, and I got hooked. Um, but this, there seems to be very little known about this. Yeah. And uh, Judith, my wife, who unfortunately died four years ago, was in the process of writing a book mm. on Edgar Rowley Smart because he was a very, very important painter, um, not just to uh, Manchester, where he was born in Cheatham Hill, but totally internationally. You know, he, he, uh, Augustus John. Uh, thought he was the best landscape painter this country's ever had. Um, and and Vallette, who um, uh, Rowley Smart knew, uh, was totally influenced by Rowley Smart. Um, 
but there's been absolutely no recognition of that painter. It's as though there's like a D notice, but I'm certain there isn't, but, you know. He is buried in Manchester, though, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Where you, were, you and I, should we say, isn't yeah. it? Well, initially we thought he was buried in Sweden, wasn't it? And he was died there then. And then it was... Well, that was Switzerland, not... Yes. Yeah. And then he turns up in Cheetah Mill areas. And that's it. it, yeah. It's amazing, isn't it, the story of that chap? He's, but it, he deserves it, so much more recognition. But, but he, he lived the most fantastic life. Uh, but unfortunately, he was involved, like most young men were of his period, in the First World War. Mm. And um, and he already was sort of asthmatic, um, uh, and he was gassed, which didn't help. So he was in a hell of a state when uh, the, the war ended. But he'd spent some time uh, convalescing uh, in in Paris, and fell in love with it, and. Um, uh, got to know quite a lot of the post-impressionist painters there. Um, in fact, he's, he's painting a style virtually from what people refer to like Vallette's manner, but uh, became sort of post-impressionist. And um, But uh, this book that Judith was writing, hopefully mm. someday will, somebody will complete it. I hope so. It yeah. needs to be done. Yeah, need, yeah exactly. It needs to be done. Yeah. Just want to move fast forward, actually, Jeffrey, to the you know the COVID crisis. It was in all the papers. Everyone was it. I, I have noticed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, you responded to this by your was it isolation heads. Yeah. What happened? I, I was banged up here, and uh, and I, I wasn't seeing anybody, I'd, and. Um, uh, I started painting for some strange subconscious reason, heads. And, uh, and not only that, but the heads on panel and board because the company I get my canvases from in London, uh, I couldn't acquire any canvases. Mm. So, so I ended up painting everything on board. Oh, that was the one you could. Yeah. And, uh, and it ended up as a series um, of of these heads of 30 and um, and I thought before they all sort of evaporate out into collections um, it, it would be nice to actually preserve them in, in a book which we happen to have just Bob here uh, cue the link Carl here we go this is the book Jeffrey? that's the book Yes. Available where? Uh, available. <laughs> um, unfortunately, not, not, not from me because I don't have uh, ways of sending it. Yeah. But, but I think it's on Amazon and also um, the Cheshire Art Gallery in right. Bramall. They always have got um, uh, copies of the book there. So and it's a limited edition of 500. God, it's sounding like a commercial now, isn't it? Yeah, why not? But uh, I'm over the moon with it because uh, Judith uh, did a number of books on me when she was alive. And, yeah, I, and yeah. I, I wanted to do something which was at least as good as. Yeah. This reminds me of Aubrey Beardsley, the yellow and the... Even that looks beardsley Well, well, well yellow has become my corporate colour. All, all the yeah. books have had yellow covers and... Uh, Big plug, big book. <laughs> and I'm over the moon with it. Right, we're up to date now, Jeffrey. Have you got canvases here with the, would you describe them as what? Seascapes, the waves, yeah, well, swimmers. The, well, these heads, yeah. uh, slowly, it, it, I did them with um, uh, an emphasis on clouds behind them. Yeah. And the clouds, suddenly started to sort of morph into the hair of the figure and then um, and then one day I was sort of here and, and I noticed on my wall over there a, a, a seascape I did many years ago yeah and, and I thought 
Well, those cloud shapes are, are basically very, very similar to wave shapes. So I'm now working on these paintings. Um, Can you see that one behind you? Yes, there's one, there's one behind there. Do you title them or are they numbered or just...? <laughs> well, my titles are absolutely abysmal um, uh, because I, I don't like doing anything too specific because that's impinging on the viewer, Yeah. me. And I'd prefer the viewer to uh, sort of uh, make, make their, their own, own opinions, mind. Yeah. yeah. So, like that one, will be called Bather. <laughs> Not Aphrodite at the waterfall. <laughs> no, 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 no. Mr Hancock. No, no. So what plans for the future? Are you just going to keep... It sounds right, that. Just keep on. Are you going to... Well, well, there's one thing, it's unfinished. unfortunately, business. which was going to take place at the beginning of the, um, the outbreak, was uh, Cheshire Art Gallery, where I've been acquiring work of mine from, believe it or not, the late 50s through to what I'm doing now. And they were going to have this sort of retrospective show at their gallery. And... Um, and not only that, but they were going to produce a book on me, mm -hmm. not specifically on the, um, the, the, the exhibition. And also, um, a film was being produced uh, by a wonderful filmmaker called Gaius. Um, and half of that film has been released now. And uh, and the the other half is in the lap of the gods at present. That mm. needs to be filmed, and I think that will incorporate this cloud and wave series. And uh, hopefully, the exhibition, which was cancelled because of um, uh, uh, the COVID mm. thing, uh, as things are happening now, hopefully the exhibition will come off before the the year's up. But I, only the gallery can answer that. You left a remarkable left. You're still with us, fortunately. A legacy, though, isn't it? The, I'm so pleased I've known you for 30 odd years, and I think the work you've, it's outstanding. It really is. It's, well, I never, I never stop. You know, I get yeah. up first thing six o'clock every morning, and and I'm up here. Mm -hmm. Not sweating like I am now. It's usually a lot, <laughs> a lot cooler. Yeah. But, um, yeah. But that's what life's about. It, yeah. You know, it's, I'm doing what I've always wanted to do, and that's worth its weight in gold. It's an enviable um, position, isn't it? Like yeah. It really yeah. is. Jeffrey, it's been fabulous, honestly. Really, it's not been the most intellectual of conversations, obviously, but. Hopefully we give a bit of a hindsight into you and your work, because I'm in love with it, I am, and uh, thank you for speaking to us. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Cheers, thank, thank you. you. Cheers.